We'll start this meeting at 634. Um, we reconvene from an executive session and we're here in open session. And there is no one in the public, so there's no public input. And there's no student report because school has not yet started. Um, no. We'll continue business. So new business. We are going over the school committee goals that we set up in our last meeting. I have a few questions on this one. Certainly. Do you want to go page by page, or do you want to, how do you want to? Um, yeah, I would go from the start. I don't have any questions on the first page. All right. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Anyone else on the first page? Anything that you see that was missing or anything? All right, good. Scott? Um, on page two, under financial ass and asset management, three activities, a budget, the food service workers, contract is, is mentioned in both six and nine do we need do we need both of them so nine says support the process to negotiate a new contract and six is successfully negotiate an employment contract with I think you do oh I thought we were going to do all I think you do need both three so what is what it is one for the for the workers and one's for the actual contract with the company and I'll, and I'll ask Michael to that what it was in, but if I, I believe I have it correct that item six is an employment contract with the workers and item nine would be the contract okay that's what I didn't know is the contract with the company up as well Providers. yes okay yeah, okay correct right. that is correct right in the in the labor contract right so we well. are negotiating right. a labor contract and putting out out to bid for yeah. the yeah that's what I just wanted to know I didn't I wasn't sure oh. that's a good question okay that was my only comment on that one, that page. I noted at the bottom of the page the Board of Selectmen term outdated. Select oh, that's board. yeah. What is it? The um, select board. Do we change it yet, or do we wait we until it's changed in the bylaws? The town meeting approved it, right? I, th I thought it was approved. There was a no, but they haven't approved by the state yet. Oh, yeah, that's, oh that's, that's right. Okay. okay. Or the oh, or even a vote. For the I think. policy yeah. subcommittee, because I think yeah, we, we did we it. did start changing it in some of those. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, right. <clears throat> On the educational program page, number eight, the expansion of the freshman advisory program, did we vote to keep that in or to remove it? Hmm. We had some discussion on that, but I didn't know if we thought we wanted to keep that in or not. I think that's why we use the word explore. explore. Right. I'm going to look back to. I mean, we can keep it in. I don't. Yeah, that you can see that. I think that's right, <coughs> Mrs. Bowell, because if you look at what the edit is, right. I, th I think we had a discussion about whether or not we felt like there should be some. Yeah, um, we wanted to uh, work with the high school <coughs> administration to see if there was maybe a possibility. Was it, what was the need? Because I think I'm, I'm, I'm recalling making reference to a survey that was done about connectedness. Yeah, and I think the idea was that we didn't want to make the decision right there. At the, at the policy so subject. I mean, at the uh, goals workshop. I think yeah. you're right. But we changed it a little bit to kind of explore the possibility yeah. or the need. Yeah, I didn't remember what the final outcome was, so. That's my, that's my recollection. <clears throat> Did we talk about maybe expanding it down into eighth grade so that they're aware of it? Or was that something else we were talking about? I don't remember that. Yeah, I'm not recalling that. Sounds like a deposition. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it had to do with social emotional. That's what I'm thinking it was. Okay. okay. Any so do people want to keep it then as explore? I think it's worth it. I don't think there's any harm in No, definitely not. Okay. Can we go back um, just about the select board? Maybe we could just clarify with the town exactly where that stands. Is it approved? Has it been approved yet? Is it, is it official or not, I guess? I am, I am confused about whether it needs to have a vote vote from the legislature or approved. I can. I can look into that with the town administrator. I think, I think at the finance planning team meeting, they did mention at the beginning of that meeting, I think that was the meeting where they said even though it's been voted at town meeting, they're still waiting for state approval. Okay. Okay. And I'll see if I can find out something. Yeah, and, and I don't well, know if they knew what the timeline was. Would there be any reason <clears throat> the state wouldn't allow it? 
No. Then I won't see any problem with moving forward with yeah. going over the policies and yeah. correcting the words. And again, at the time that these are adopted, they're still called Board of Selectmen, so we can always just change it next year. These are just the goals, the policies I'm more worried yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. in terms of the policies. Yeah, yeah but um, it's probably not. As you say, it's probably not very critical, but. <clears throat> yeah. On the family and community relations, the support the superintendent's goal of establishing a parent university program. Mm. Since you have that now, I thought we had made a change to. Yeah, probably should know, continue. Promoting, you know, the annual or something like that. I, I, yeah, let's see. And same thing with the support the research Im implementation of a school district mobile app. Is that. Live yet or not? No. It's no. I'm going to give you an update. It's not. Okay. I'm going to give you an update tonight under my report. Okay. Um, well, the parent university happened last year, so I think that needs to be the language needs to be changed on that one. How about are you comfortable with continuing the parent of university program? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, just get rid of the word establishing. Right. Really support the superintendent's goal of a parent university, an annual parent university there you program. Go. I like that better. Support this of an annual. Yeah. You whatever you know. The goal is high. <laughs> the app, um, I think we're very close. I mean, I, I almost think you could just delete that in its entirety if you trust that I'll have that ready in the next few weeks. I'm sure Mike Terrell will keep you on your toes. Oh, he's working that boy hard. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I think we can keep it as like just support the app or whatever, like the continuation of or something. We haven't seen it work yet, and so I, I just I just know from whenever we've done any tech things at my office, About whenever they say it's going to be implemented, it's usually a couple months later than that. So, so well, I guess it really depends on whether you're going to care about utilization. Like, are you going to promote utilization yeah, of it? Point. Because once it's implemented, right. it's implemented. It's all about utilization it's after that. Kind of like that. the websites too. Like, do we the level of updates, followers, downloads? So. I like the mention of it in some respect, but I think it can. How, can you give me some language? Support the. Ms. Boutwell. Um, support the ongoing utilization of the school district mobile app. Or perhaps even the final implementation and ongoing utilization. Yeah, you could add final since implementation since it's not done yet. Support the implementation and ongoing utilization of the dis of the school district's mobile app. Yep. Mm -hmm. Correct. <clears throat> and when when Mr. When the, when Mr. Tyrell is not working at it anymore, do we have he's, a tech he's, team beyond that? Like, I, I'm going to give you an update tonight. Okay, <laughs> we can go to that later. I promise to answer that question. So those remind me. Those are just my my questions. Okay. Um, should we just hold off until where there is a couple of changes? We'll just bring it in next week, uh, month, or meeting. Sure. So if you're okay, what I'll do is I'll make these uh, changes, yep. produce a new document for the September 10th meeting, and if those changes are acceptable, probably in them, it's probably good that Mr. Webster be here at that meeting. And then we'll take we can a vote to adopt them at that time. Okay. Sounds Very good. good. All right. On to the first reading of. How to get rid of a school committee? <laughs> I mean, this I'm has sorry. generated a lot of questions Mobile in the central office, office. I have to tell you, sorry. there's been a lot of discussion. <laughs> Who are you trying to kick? What's up? happening? I'm just you, nothing's happening. If you don't show up to the August 27th I saw that, meeting, I was like, gosh, <laughs> we have we have um, we have goals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's these goals and there's other. Yeah, goals. we have goals. If you don't show up to the August 27th meeting, you are removed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Mel's watching on TV. So I know he's celebrating watching. right now. <laughs> I'm Diana just or Rich, would you like to give a <laughs> overall? Of I'd the be happy to. Sure. <laughs> um, it's pretty simple. Uh, it, as you can see, there's a lot of text crossed out, and that's because it's much easier to just reference this chapter and section of the town charter. Um, it's usually a best practice anyway, so that if they ever change the text, we wouldn't have to, you know, maintain this as well. And so that's the that's basically why you're seeing the removal of all this text. All right. And because it was such a large change, we felt it needed a first reading. Yeah, and I and I would I would add that I suspect that we'll find a lot of other examples like this. It just seems to make more 
rather than have a policy that is the uh, tries to be the exact duplicate of a something that's in the charter, it just makes more sense to refer to the charter and just cleaner uh, and simpler, I think. Makes sense. Great. I have one suggestion or concern when it, the language says, and pursuant to chapter six, section three, charter of the town of North Reading, I think it should either be section three of the charter of the town of North Reading or pursuant to the charter, uh, uh, charter of town of North Reading comma chapter six section three yeah I think of the just I think I think you need of the between the number three and charter for the reference all right I'll take a motion to accept with the amendment so moved second I'll second all right all in favor aye, aye. motion carries all right, then that's accepting for a first reading. Or a first reading. First reading. Yes. <coughs> okay, next on the agenda, um, we have a new club proposal. Um, Mr. Bernard, would you like to I would, lean away? I would, Madam Chairman. Thank you. So um, I think you might all be aware that we introduced um, the first robotics program last year. It was a, a program that was brought to the district administration by a group of parents and students that were very interested in um, in working to, um, to to bring about a successful robotics program in the district and working with the director of digital learning Dan Downs the first robotics program seemed to be a, a suitable venue for um, introducing robotics to students at, at particularly at the high school level where um, students didn't necessarily have that when they left um, the middle school where there was a, a budding uh, program we have courses at the high school now, Robotics Academy 1 and Robotics Academy 2, but not as an extracurricular activity. So we've, seen, we've had a very successful year, the, the first robotics program, um, ver very largely due to the, 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 the work of the parent support group that has been responsible for <clears throat> um, chaperoning, coordinating events, fundraising, <clears throat> excuse me, donations from um, local businesses, including Amazon Robotics in, that's located in North Reading. And um, quite honestly, I, I see a place for the district to provide some support to them by um, allowing them to use the school facilities. I think it would be, uh, I think it's appropriate that right now they're not able to do that because they don't have a school-based employee to work with them in the form of an advisor. And um, so what I'm asking the committee to do is to endorse um, kind of consistent with our new pilot process f that was adopted in the new collective bargaining agreement with the teachers union that um, we, we institute a pilot program with a faculty advisor in the first year at a $500 stipend. And what that stipend would allow, I think are a couple of, a couple of key things. One is that there is an employee of the district now that can have access to, to the building, to this, to this campus, to, um, to host competitions for practices and whatever other associated activities have been taking place in, in private businesses in the community. Um, work with the um, school administration to promote events, publicity of the events, student announcements, those kinds of things. And then thirdly, work to, um, to bring this program down into the lower grades, the elementary schools specifically. So um, we, we see this value in robotics. They were active at Parent University. Um, I don't think they're asking a lot of the district in terms of a sponsorship, and I'd like to I'd like to have the, the district support them in that. Does anyone have any questions or? How would that work conceptually, pushing it into the lower grades, in terms of its function as a high school club? And yeah, I think we, we would. So we we received a grant for the elementary schools. It's called the it's like the Lego Robotics Program. Mm -hmm. It's going to be introduced partly through grade into grade four with the digital learning specialists. So we think we can we kind of have a little bit of a hook there, with the digital learning specialists introdu introducing that program in the elementary schools. But we're looking to kind of use that to build the capacity for interest when students come to the middle school for the actual first robotics program. Wasn't there about 10 years ago a Lego robotics? At the elementary schools? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm I don't know. I'm pretty if it sure because my son was in it for okay. a couple of years. It might have been like an after the school yeah. thing. But yeah. Like a so club was, type of yeah. student activity. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, I know. You definitely <coughs> did it for two years, so yeah. I know it was. Yeah, good, good. He's graduated for two years to pass, so it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. Is there somebody already identified that wants to be that teacher champion? You know, advisor? I think I think there are people that 
the administration sees as probably being likely interested, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, teachers in that in that field. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. It, you know, until it's official, no one's really expressed definitive interest. But I think we have people that have been kind of doing some volunteer work with the group, and I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if they if they stepped forward to have a little bit more of a formal role. I, I expect that that will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Just just to clarify, this is the group that's been meeting outside. Correct. At the realtor. They've been at the meeting at, at realtor realty offices, yeah. right? Okay. It's just hard to let. I mean, there's no. There's no ability for them to have access to this building off hours. You know, there's no supervision of a school of an employee of the district. You know, you, you can understand all of the kind of mm -hmm. tentacles that that presents yeah. with liability and such. So mm -hmm. we're we're looking to avoid that. But at the same time, if they're going to have a, if they're going to host a competition or participate in a competition in a school, we think that you know having a, a school venue to do that makes yeah. sense. Mm -hmm. S um, so prior to this. They're, they've been participating without uh, paying a, a, a fee? Correct. So they would be, if they hadn't done anything else, they'd be subject to an activity fee. Which allows them to do any other exactly. thing sure. as right. well. Yep, so. yep, right. no, just right. making sure I'm clear. Um, if there's no further questions or discussions, I'll entertain a motion to accept the first robotics club. Mm -hmm. Saying it right? I will move to, uh, I'd like to move to accept the first robotics club. I second. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Very good. Thank you. It's nice to see. It yes. is. That's good. They've done, a, they've done a really nice job. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Conley. Yes, thank you. So in your packet this evening was a draft uh, of the fiscal year 2020 budget development calendar. Um, I know it seems kind of hard to believe that we'd already be talking about fiscal year 2020, um, but we typically try to uh, you know, lay out the calendar in the kind of late August, September timeframe. And I will say that the calendar is very similar to what it has been in the, in the past. I think this, this schedule and calendar does seem to work. Um, in terms of the, the timeline with the town and the finance planning team, and, um, the finance committee, and, so, and submitting our budget on to the Board of Selectmen in time for kind of the town meeting warrant. So essentially the month of September, uh, the two meetings in September would certainly focus around the large capital improvement plan and we're working on putting, making, making updates to that plan now for a presentation on September 10th. We would look for the committee to vote on September 24th because our large capital projects are due to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee by the end of September, beginning of October. So that will allow us to, to vet those projects and meet that timeline. Um, you actually may hear uh, a draft of the budget goals as early as this evening uh, at the, the next agenda topic, but by the end of the month, we'd want to draft our budget goals. Um, we start the process internally on, on October 18th with the principals and the directors in terms of the budget request sheets that I administer and, and, and work with the, the budget leaders for in the district. Um, we'd also present the five and ten year enrollment projections, which I think is really kind of the, the start of the, the budget system, you know, process in a way because it, it makes it ties so much into our, our budget discussions later on. But so that would be. In, on October 29th, we have to kind of wait for uh, October 1 enrollments to come in and kind of and, and run that through the, the the projections and see and see what what changes. Um, the request would be due back to my office right before the Thanksgiving holiday break, um, and then we would go through a lot of internal conversations in the months of January, um, December, and January, and early February with the administrative team. We would anticipate although not listed here, that's when there would be several meetings with the budget subcommittee as well. Um, we always like to have a draft of the budget just after the holiday season, a, a solid working draft around just after the, the Christmas break, or the winter break, um, and we would certainly kick up, have a, several meetings with the budget subcommittee probably between January and February 15th when we would plan to release the budget books to the full school committee. And that would give the school committee plenty of time to review. March 4th would be the preliminary budget presentation March 28th we would we would offer the the school budget webinar uh, maybe maybe we'll try to do maybe even maybe more than one this year but at least at least one offering um, of a webinar how, how did the webinar go 
I thought it went fairly well um, for the first the first one. We we tried to publicize it as much as we could. We 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 did kind of a lunchtime uh, webinar. There was about 22 participants, and it was a pretty active discussion. About a 30-minute mm -hmm. presentation followed by some Q and A um, afterwards. But I thought I thought it went pretty well. I thought it was the first time. It was well done. I mean, being on the other side at that point, and the fact that it was over lunch, like just working, it was very easy to kind of get on yep. and, and view. So I think it gives it gets access to people that might not be able to come to a meeting or something like that. Mm. Yeah, I thought it went, went well. We we um, we enjoyed it. Yeah, people were it able was, to pre-register into the webinar, and that gave them access to documents mm -hmm. in advance. The presentation that I was able to share out with those that had had registered. So I thought it went pretty well. Um, April 3rd would be our first budget workshop prior to the public hearing to discuss the budget and then on April 8th that Monday evening in this room we would uh, have the public hearing on the budget um, that would be at 630 and then April 24th it's probably would most likely be necessary would be a second budget workshop uh, before the school committee would set to, to vote the budget on April 29th <coughs> Um, yep, and that should actually say fiscal 20, that budget workshop would be held, so correct that. And then the school committee would vote the budget on the, the Monday, April 29th meeting, um, and I would work out the date with the finance committee. I've tentatively selected May 1st, which is that Wednesday evening. That At that point, where our budget is kind of voted, then we can kind of present that to the finance committee, so it would, I think May 1st would work out well. And then I believe May 6th, the select, the select men, or I think we'll, we'll to be determined with that, we'll, what we'll continue to call um, the board, would vote the town meeting warrant, and then town meeting would vote the budget on June 3rd. And just to be clear, the, the town meeting date's not set, yet, correct? correct? Right. Yeah, these, it's, <coughs> these are um, anticipated date. I guess that would be the, third, the first Monday in June is what it has been. It might, it might be smart to just include June 2019 TEA. Yeah. Yeah. They may be moving that based on the last time. Yeah, I think okay. yeah, they, yeah. Have, they have now the ability to do yeah. so. To move it. And if that happens, then the question is, do, does any of this other, do any of these other dates get moved um, or not? If we have more time yeah. or we... Not if it, I wouldn't think of it moving forward. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we, we would, back, we would so. need, need to uh, move them. I guess if we were to come to the April 29th and maybe felt like we needed another week, we would probably, and, and at that point we knew... Tell me it was going to be June 10th. We probably would have another week, and we could amend mm -hmm. amend the calendar at that time. But I think we could <coughs> we could meet this these deadlines. Should you know and see what happens. Okay. So I mean, there has been a motion to adopt or accept the um, the calendar in the past. Um, I don't know if you want to do that this evening or I believe I think probably given the public hearing vote especially it's probably smart to do that yeah I think we have done that we... all right if that is what is needed I'll entertain a motion to accept the 2020 budget development schedule I move to accept the 2020 budget development schedule I would I would just might revise the June date to be determined for town meeting yes I'll, <coughs> with a TBD I'll make that revision. revision. TBD. Right. <laughs> second. Uh, All right, second as amended, correct? Yep. Yes. Right. As amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. So, yeah, the next item is. I well. was just going to say, if you want to just continue. I will do so then. Thank you, Madam Chairman. So, we. Um, we have drafted the fiscal year 2020 budget goals. Um, we maybe maybe a meeting earlier than in the past, but we both, Mr. Bernard and I, felt like we had some guidance based on the school committee uh, goals workshop that took place at the beginning of, of August to take a pass at, or I'm sorry, the end of July to take a pass at at the goals. And essentially, we are certainly using the school committee budget goal document that, I mean, school committee goals that you just uh, adopted and discussed a short time ago, as well as, you know, NRPS 2021, the strategic plan. 
to, to guide and kind of frame these specific budget goals. Um, for I have highlighted any changes from the prior year budget goals I've sort of put in red font in the, <coughs> on the handout to make it easier. Um, and what essentially what we were trying to do was capture the, the spirit of the conversation that took place in July at the, at the school committee goals workshop. Um, I've also included the fiscal year 2019 budget goals in, in the packet as well as a point of reference. But I think it's fair to say is, um, you know, most of the goals are certainly similar. We would you know, continue to support year four now of NRPS 2021. That would be budget objective number one with the, with the full sub, sub bullet points in terms of things we would focus on in achieving, but certainly NRPS 2021 would be a driver and a goal to accomplish as much of um, items laid out in that strategic plan as possible. Um, the item highlighted there in red font specifically discusses some of the, the staffing and the initi initiatives in, around um, expanding foreign language, curriculum at the middle school and the high school, the, the STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics course offering. So we. We try to get specific, the social emotional learning needs of students, all things laid out in NRPS 2021. Uh, so that was the major change there. Um, the item number two, the maintain commitment of up upkeep of school facilities. We specifically have added a goal to uh, tr attempt to hire key operational positions, including a facilities engineer, a maintenance mechanic, and groundskeeper. So we certainly talked about the goals workshop, the need for these positions, they've been part of the budget the last uh, couple cycles and unfortunately have not been able to be funded. So we wanted to highlight those specifically in this area. Um, certainly the need to continue to evaluate the food service program uh, with a goal of continuing now on to operate a self-sufficient break-even program since that was achieved this past fiscal year. And then I certainly added um, begin to develop a long-range capital investment plan for the replacement of major food service capital equipment. I think that's, that I think that's necessary. Yeah. We talked about that and maybe with the ability of a, of a program that's being self-supportive and, and, and profitable, we can begin to put that together and, and try to lay that out of what that would look like. Um, continue to expand the community awareness of the budget process through the use of multimedia. We just talked about the webinar and, and different things that We've been doing the short budget videos and the website and everything we're trying to do, the transcript articles, uh, my, my, my Twitter feed, you know, everything we're trying to do to gain awareness about the budget, that, that would be continue. As you know, we already up have a five-year capital improvement plan. You'll hear updates to that plan next meeting. Uh, we've, we have done a pretty good job, I think, of, of monitoring unfunded mandates, but we'll continue to, to do that. Um, the restoration of school and department operating budgets continue to commit to that. Try, attempting to manage unforeseen costs, that's been an, an ongoing goal. Um, we talked about in the goals work, workshops, goal number nine, explore options for reducing the reductions of fees and tuitions assessed, so mainly through the athletics, kindergarten, transportation, fine arts. Um, that's been a goal in the past. So obviously, we know that the challenge is in that, but we certainly would look at that. Um, and then goal number 10 uh, would be the, we'd be, we will be negotiating a new contract with the food service um, and transportation providers. So we talked about the Chartwell's contract is coming to an end, NR, NRT's contract uh, could be coming to an end this year. So we would try to explore creative ways to procure these services that have potential to yield operational savings. We've talked about a regional wise contract with other school districts. So that would be explored. Goal number 11 on page two, uh, review and report annually on the newly instituted performing arts fee and recommend changes as needed. So we talked about the need to monitor that fee and, and see where we're at this spring. Uh, number 12 has been an ongoing goal about just collaborating with the, the finance planning team and the chairs and vice chairs. And we'll certainly continue to do that. And then goal number 13 um, would just be, uh, we received two additional grants this year through lobbying efforts with um, Brad Jones, and we would continue to, to try to work with our state and local officials to achieve funding to uphold the mission and vision of the school district. Um, so those were two, two awards that will certainly greatly benefit you know, the district um, 
in terms of technology and in schools, school security measures. Um, and then the 14th goal, we would approve a fiscal year 2020 budget that adequately meets district requirements for optimum student achievement. So that kind of obviously sums everything up what would be our ultimate, ultimate objective. All right. So I guess I entertain any questions. Um, I think um, Cliff would be oh, very okay. proud of yep. leaving in number nine. Okay. Yeah. Madam Chairman, on that one, I just, I, I'm thinking, I just mentioned to Michael, I think the closed parentheses is misplaced, just typographic. I think it should be after the word programs. It really reads better. Mm -hmm. So we'll make that change. Okay. But you're right. Yeah. I, th I think Mr. Bowers would be pleased I think to would see be very continue pleased to, to see that be a hawk on that. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> with, with the two contracts of food service and the transportation, do they both end this year, or can they be extended? Is, is there an option to extend them? So food service, there's no option. We are ending year five, so we have to go and procure those services again. The transportation, the way we bid the transportation contract two years ago, three years ago now, was that we gave ourselves an option to accept two alternative years in that contract. So we could, we could extend. In, for a fourth and fifth year. At an increased cost. At an increased cost. We could go out and see where we're at and then opt to do nothing and extend the current contract. We, do, we could, we could kind of explore both options. Uh, but we do have an option to go to a, a fourth and fifth year with there, the current contract. Is there a time by which we have to, we have to request those, op we have to? We'd have to notify them by April 1st. Okay. So we, have, we, we really have to make sure before that date that we know what we're going to do. Cause Correct, yeah. I mean, anything that, if we can negotiate something better than that, great. But if not, we don't want to not correct. invoke that option by April. So we would, the idea was that the, the bids would go out and come back in um, well before that date, probably February time frame. The bids would be coming in. So we have plenty of time during the budget development to assess that decision. Um, it occurs to me that another use of that option, if we do are, if we are able to explore um, the possibility of a shared transportation system with another district, for instance, which is, I think, one of the goals here, or at least yes. implied, then that option might allow us to align our contract with uh, that's correct an identified district or districts. Correct. Yeah. Yep. That's right. So I'll be having a meeting in early October with other area districts to see if there's still interest in doing so. Some had expressed interest, some had expressed that they think they're okay, but um, I'll be reaching out and to talk about that. Great. So, so in terms of the, of the role of this committee in negotiating it, you would be the one that would be negotiating this, the contract and we would have to approve or not? Or so what would happen is um, the bids would go out, they would come back in, we would sort of have a committee to sort of evaluate them and then I would certainly come back to this committee in public session and kind of pre present those options. And then and they would certainly be also vetted and discussed through the budget process as well, given the budgetary impact that they would have. So I'm, the budget subcommittee would certainly be involved, um, you know, before the public presentation. Okay. Okay. Any further questions or discussions that you'd like? All right, I will entertain a motion to accept the fiscal um, 2020 budget goals. I will move to accept the fiscal 2020 budget goals as presented. No changes, I think, right? Um, just the minor, minor. Oh, the, the uh, parentheses. parentheses, yep. Yeah. In, uh, In, as we still don't know, if the board of select yeah. or select board, so I would just. Yep, be that's fine. Uh, second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you again, Great. Mike. Thank you. Yep. Okay. I will entertain a motion to accept the June 25th open session minutes. I move to accept the June 25th open session minutes. Second. Okay. I was not here, so I am going to abstain. But all in favor? Aye. Aye. Three, one, zero. Or three, zero, one. Three, one. Three, zero, okay. one. Um, I will accept a motion to accept the open session goal workshop on July 19th. 
I move to accept the open session July 19th goals workshop. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Was that the first time we yeah. ever got it done on one day or one meeting? First time since I've been superintendent. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> All right, I'll entertain a motion to accept the open session meeting of July 19th. I move to accept the open session oh, meeting yeah. on July 19th. Yeah. Thank you. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries four to zero, thank you. And let's see what's next. The budget update. So I believe there was no operating budget update, but we did have a couple one I, a couple items that I wanted to speak to in this in this area, uh, particularly around the fourth quarter report for student activities. So, um, in adherence to the, the school committee policy and, and guidelines, um, we've been presenting quarterly updates and our reconciled certified bank balances of each of the school student activity accounts. So this represents um, the quarter four ending balances, which is the balances through the end of fiscal year 2018, which reflects activity through June 30th, 2018. So we generally need a little bit of time to, to reconcile and close out and certify our, our year end balances with the, the bank's statements. Um, so what is included in this packet and what's been included throughout the, the prior fiscal year each, at the end of each quarter was Again, our certified uh, reconciled quarterly account balances, as well as the listing of the active sub accounts in their year end balance at the middle school and the high school, and those are the two accounts that had those sub account accounts associated with it. So on page one here, you can see the um, reconciled certified balance as of 630, 2018 for each of the five schools. On the back of page one or page two would be the, 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 the sub accounts listed for the, for the middle school and then the sub accounts listed for, for the high school. So um, I think overall, I think I was certainly pleased with um, how things went uh, throughout the fiscal year and um, certainly a, a lot of work went in to this by the, the school treasurers and the school principals and certainly my office and Sabita, Ms. Sabita Pai who, who handles the student activity accounts as the chief accountant in my office that uh, uh, works with the, tr the school treasurers and the principal's offices and we certainly a lot you know worked very hard this year to uh, adhere to the new uh, school committee policies and, and guidelines around student activities to be in full compliance with um, the, the the most latest changes uh, of student activity accounts and address some of the, the audit recommendations from from a little over a year ago so that being said I don't know if there's any particular questions um the class of 2018 they still have quite a balance is that because their gift has not come through yeah so they they typically have a policy allows them i think 90 days at, through graduation so they have until the end of september okay. um to make their gift or request their their um their balance to be kind of refunded to them so they have 90 days to kind of go and set up their reunion account show us evidence of that and then we would cut a check to that reunion account Typically what they've done um, is they've either notified us what their class gift has been in the last they couple do. of classes have done a sign. They are too. So if the So it's being dedicated to the sign. It, it, okay. If that's the case. So once I get that uh, information from the, the treasurer and the class president, um, what we'll do is we'll do a transfer of that amount of, of funds into the gift account for that designated purpose if that's okay. gonna be the sign. Typically what they do is they don't do the full amount. They might do um, leave about twelve hundred dollars so they can have some startup cash for their reunion five years from now. Oh. So maybe they'll tell us they'll take three thousand dollars will be transferred, and the balance will be made out to their reunion account. That's typically what what happens. Okay, um, and can you speak to the accounts that are you know above twenty five hundred? Is it is that typical? Both yeah, these in are middle pretty. School and high school. These are pretty typical. Um, you know, most have you know somewhat you know, under $2,500. Um, it's not unusual that, you know, the general school field trip account is a little bit over that, that amount of money. Um, you know, the class of 2000, you know, 
2019, 2020. They did some good fundraising last year, and it's not, it's not atypical that the class of 2019 has a healthy balance. Um, the biggest one here is the master's account. Yes. You know, clearly where um, you may recall at the end of quarter three, I believe they were like 85 or 90,000. Yes. They knew they had some, a lot of year and expenses coming, coming up. They did a trip over in the April vacation. So a lot of that, those items were paid the final quarter of the fiscal year. So it's not atypical uh, or unusual that they're closing the year with this type of balance. Um, they, it has been their practice because there's a lot of startup expenses in that next fall to get ready for the licensing rights and all this, the, the, the expenses for their, their show in the winter that they need this type of balance to get, to get things started. So that's, this has sort of been somewhat, uh, you know, I would say, the practice. Although they've done, they've had some very successful shows the last two years, and they've done some really good fundraising, so it's it's probably a little bit higher than what it's been. But it's typical they would end the year over with about forty-five to fifty thousand or so. Um, um, yeah. Then the other one that's rather large: um, student leadership and mentoring. Um, yeah, my my feeling is on that they haven't they so they do a late school year their um, uh, training. Okay. My feeling is they have not paid that that bill for the to the trainer yet. Okay. Um, they collect a fee. It might have happened after June. This is again. This is as of, maybe that happened in July. And yeah. is Slam the one that puts that's, on the? That's Slam. Um, yep. Freshman orientation. And the uh, accident. No, that's um that's on here as well. That's um students against drunk driving. Okay. Student Leadership Academy does the the freshman year mentoring right. and the freshman orientation program. Okay. And that could be the case with the yearbook as well. I don't, it probably know. is probably a bill that's not been paid. Yeah, that, that would be my guess. It was not paid as of yeah. June 30. Yeah. All right. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I, I, I just have, well, two questions. First, on the band one. So I know, I know when the performing arts fee was, discussion about that got around, there were some questions on what is what they have to pay for, what they don't, about, you know, if, it's, if they take it for a class, it just, there's no fee associated with that? Mm -hmm. Is this ban the stage ban? Is this something the additional uh, outside of it, or does the actual band at the high school raise money as well? For, the, for their competitions, like the mic. I don't know. Mic yeah, festivals. I think this is outside of that of the stage class. ban of yeah. the class. So it's the actual class, but if they do something like the extra competitions, outside, like the mic festivals and such, yeah, they fundraise in order to pay for yeah. the for the cost of something, you know, something like that. Okay. And then the only other question was the maskers, how that, going forward, I know the next thing on here is the revolving account. So would, do we anticipate that this, the club account is going to stay around and they're still going to be raising in this? So we had, this will actually be a phasing out. There'll be a phasing out of the maskers student activity sub account. It's a great question. So um, the, the revenue and the receipts uh, and going forward will be, will be, the idea is that they would be deposited in the new account, performing arts account, that we hope is established uh, this evening. And, um, but the expense, we'll be expending the, this balance down throughout this year um, and until there's certainly nothing remaining and then everything would kind of then be happening in the new, the new account. That would be established, and their fundraising would go into the new account as well. Yeah, we we've talked about that. We feel like it's a little bit it's it's sort of easier to keep everything in one account, so that that new account would be user fees, ticket sales, and any little bit of you know, fundraising that 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 group may do. It's it's essentially the same the same group, as opposed to trying to have the two sets of books in a little bit and a small amount of money over over here. Um, that's what we've talked about. We think that's maybe a little you know, certainly cleaner. Um, so the idea is that you know we have no sort of the authority to transfer the balance to one account. So this money would have to be expended down, and then the ticket sales and the user fees would go into the revolving. Account. So this was a performing arts user fee, right? Correct. And um, so not notorious is separate. Is it was that included in that? It was. So would that in the new fee? In the new, in the fee, new yes. fee. So, are, so if they're doing any f f fundraising, that would also f flow into that. No, I, I mean, I think the notorious may still exist. I, I think 
I think the idea is that there's so many students involved in the maskers and they're they're essentially doing essentially the same the same amount of students that are all going to pay that that fee I guess I'm just asking is there a danger of some monies getting mingled commingled and not knowing what I, I think we'll we'll work pretty closely. Yeah. We've already had meetings with Miss Kane. Yeah, we have one to, last week to make sure that does not happen. I mean, we're committed to make sure that if yeah. Notorious is out raising money for an yep. event, it stays that money gets dedicated yeah. to Notorious. Exactly. Yeah. Is that is that your question? Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. 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 you're going to account for all that stuff. It, yeah, we, we all we all know Mrs. Kane. She's that. going to make sure that that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, we'll, so make any group to clean any group here that falls under the performing arts would th these balances would go away. And you'll account for them separately. Those no, within, that's, within the revolving within the revolving account. within the revolving. Right. Yeah. Right. Could, could, right. You will count for them within you know individually within the revolving. That's account. correct. That's right. okay. yeah. so, so notorious yeah. will also spend down the two thousand eight eighty seven in there right now, and that account's before going to go away as well. Yeah, before they resolve. Before that's the idea. I mean, I have to, I'll have to get a little more information from Ms. Kane as to those students that are involved, and if if that is, is functioning the same way she's told me, Masters is functioning in terms of any additional fundraising but the idea is that if it's essentially the same number of students and it's going to stay and to support the same level of expenses that the user fee and the ticket sales are designed to support then that would go away so I'm assuming it runs the same way as the athletic correct fees do. that's that's the goal that's here the with the revolving account right so under the athletics you have football soccer correct. soccer right, right, volleyball right. in terms football. of all the that's correct yeah. good good analogy. separate income yeah okay that's correct whatever the source yep all right Sounds. any other questions or discussion okay. thank you michael you um mr bernard or do you want to do the i think the revolving account the revolving vote account yeah account if you first. could please okay. mr conley again yes so it was recommended um by our auditor that it would be good practice um now that the adoption of the new performing arts user fee has been established at the the june meeting that would require the establishment of performing arts revolving accounts to account for the revenue and the expenses as we just talked about under Chapter 71, Section 47, that it would be a good idea for the committee to make take a formal vote, just establishing and, and authorizing these revolving accounts. Um, so there's a recommended motion included in a memo that was included in your packet, and I, you know, I think this is just good practice that's been recommended by our auditor at this yeah. point in time. I will entertain them. I actually I have a question. Excuse Certainly. me. Certainly. Yeah. Will there would there be separate revolving accounts for each elementary school there will yeah so the idea is that there'll be a separate revolving account for essentially each school but the elementary middle school and high school there will be three separate funds um, that would be established for each at each level and then within the elementary <coughs> because there's three schools we would sort of use the same fund but use project accounting in my world okay. to separate between the three schools so okay we can clearly decipher and track receipts and expenses for each production and each each user each set of school okay I, I i i'll be honest i think mr mcgowan made a good point on the last one where i'm a little bit concerned about authorizing this but it seems like i guess i'm still a little bit confused if well i just want to make sure that everyone's in agreement that you know notorious will be using this now and all the other groups will be using this now as well i understand in practice how it will operate but I just want to make sure that every every group is. I don't know what I'm asking for, but I, I'm I'm concerned that there will be ambiguity from this, and I guess I'd love to see some. I don't know if there's like an authorizing document that talks about how there will be sub account set up or whatever it is that will explain if you put this in, you get that amount out. Is there is there a document that talks about that, or is it just one account and there's no actual rules or regulation set up for it? No, there would be rules and regulations. I mean, we, we have to create the accounts because the user fee exists. We cannot, we cannot deposit a school committee voted user fee into a student activity account. Um, is that it's a difference of what is governed under the school committee and what is governed under the students. So um, the accounts do need to exist. We need a mechanism to deposit the, the fee. 
Um, and does the athletic revolving count already have documentation like that as well, or documents that were created about the it's use more of what, those? It's more what governs a revolving. And more what governs a revolving account. account. So that we we're not. I mean, under state law, we're not able to right. take funds from a revolving account based on the user fee that was established under vote of the school committee for a specific purpose and use it other than expenses that are directly associated with that purpose. Maybe they're two separate things because this is specifically being opened. I mean, I know you referenced before when we were talking about these other accounts, but this is specific for the user fees. It has to be opened Correct. for the fact that we Correct. approved user fees. That's right. So that's, that's right. one separate thing. I think where the ambiguity mm -hmm. lies is when you start to talk about some of these open balances for fundraising or ticket sales or right. things like that and, and why and understanding how that's going to be managed within this account. Because the user fee is one piece, right? We have to open it Correct. Yep. But I think the ambiguity lies more so in the rollover of some of these well, performance arts balances. And isn't it, isn't it kind that's of correct. the same how it works now? With athletics. Right. Yes. Well, no, but besides that, who who's the one that governs whether it goes to the maskers or the notorious? That advisor. The, uh, that club so advisor. So that yeah. club advisor who is still the same person. If I'm hearing the question correctly, and I don't know if I am. Maybe I'm I think, I think what, we, what, what, what I'm hearing is that people want, the committee wants to be sure that if notorious has a present balance, and we want to make sure that that balance they have a right to that amount of money. It's yeah. just going to be through a different fund. It'd be within the revolving yeah, account. The, the, but before they can access that, they'd have to spend down the money in the existing account. No, no, I understand that. Account. But I think to his question, he's saying, how is that going to be tracked if it's underneath this new format? The same it's going to be tracked the same way. way. Yeah. It's Allison the says we do Notorious it, yeah, we do raised right. 500, so it goes to the no Notorious underneath this new format. Correct. Versus right. under the old. As they're under maskers or right. whatever. I, yeah. think, I think I have a couple different concerns. Number, number one concern is if money's coming in for the user fee, how is that being divided up amongst the different organizations? Secondly, if money's coming in and they first have to use the money in their operating account right now, maskers has almost $70,000. So they're not going to get a penny of the user fees until they've already spent seventy thousand dollars, and is that fair? And I just, I just, I'm a little concerned about how it's going to operate. And I think the way to look at it, the knowledge is, we don't. Is they're all going to support the performing arts and the fine arts program Programs, right? that was, and we laid out five, you know, essentially five major activities within that fine arts, performing arts program. And there's, um, there's Notorious, you know, the a cappella group, there's a theatrical, Strings ensemble, musical production, jam string band, ensemble, right. jam band, right. the bands. And just like any user fee or gate receipt that may come in um, or other you know, gifts or fund rate that may come in to support athletics, the money stays with the athletic program. And this money will stay with the performing arts, fine arts program through theatrical and musical for those for those activities. And I mean, it will yeah, all the right. expenses will be used to support. We don't take five hundred dollars that came in or five thousand okay. dollars coming for soccer, say that five thousand dollars is only gonna be spent for soccer. We, we we don't you don't do that for athletics. No, you couldn't. Yeah, yeah so it's but the question is do all the are all the organizations aware of that as well? And if, if one raises you know, seventy thousand dollars in a year, and another. I think the I think the fundraising dollars will Arkham's stay with the fundraising dollars will stay with. If you're talking about the money generated from the user fee, correct, right. is not owed to anyone. That's correct. Based on how the fundraising the dollars, just are. like the soccer team fundraise, that money will stay with the team. And really, the user fee is going to generate is going to. It, it may just barely cover the stipends. Correct. That's right. Right. So it's not correct. like the user fee is going to. To uh, pr produce, unless we have a huge increase, I suppose, in participation. That's correct. Uh, a slush fund uh, that goes beyond just paying for right. the stipends. So, right. so just like sales too, does that? So the ticket sales would go into individual, individual accounts. That will stay. The ticket sales stay, yeah. will will stay. We'll get deposited in the revolving account, just like the gate receipts are as well. And that will be dispersed across all, or stay within the specific. I think it's probably going to have. It's going to just be knowing the expenses of a musical or theatrical production is going to have to stay within. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that it will. Yeah. 
Um, but just like the fundraising that these individual teams do, we use the project accounting to keep those fundraising dollars um, through the athletic development account for, for soccer and for basketball and for hockey. Well, we would either do the same, the plan is we to, to do the same in this area for those you know, subset of fine arts programs and students involved in fundraising. Um, but like I said, it's, it's a little bit of a work in progress because it's, it's so new. And I think the commitment is that we'll work with, you know, Mrs. Kane and the, and the club treasurers involved. And, you know, it, it may make sense to keep based on the description. I've only got the master's description right now of what those students are doing um, to keep it on the student activity side if it's that, if it's the, if that club functions that much, you know, subsequently different than what the acapella or what the user fee is doing. So I think it's a matter of us, we, we almost need to get a description um, and an account of each, uh, of each one of those sub accounts. And that's what we would do before we start switching any money you know, over. But this, the establishment of this revolving account would be allow us to put the ticket sales and the user fees into that account to support the finance programs that we just laid out in the, in the establishment of that fee. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm still concerned. Um, I, and I was on the policy subcommittee last year when we went through exactly how money is, is taken in and how everybody handles it. And it was very specific about how the money is handled. And I like the policies for there. Perhaps all we're doing today is just creating the account. We're not talking about money going into it yet. And so that's a different thing, as Ms. Boutwell points out. But I'm very nervous that if we go from a system that everybody knows how it operates, how it works, what's what's to be paid out of that, what can be paid out of it, what's paid by the school district to <clears throat> it's a work in progress. We don't exactly know yet how it's going to be used. If there is extra money left over, what's it used for? Why does one club get it versus another club? Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm not aware of exactly how it works with the athletics. And so, I mean, personally, I just like to I don't necessarily have an issue with having the account there, but before it's used, I would like to have a little bit more of an understanding of how this, how it works, and what the, I assume there has to be some guidelines that I make everybody adopts. Yeah. yeah. I think what we're looking for tonight is to establish the account, and maybe between now and the next meeting, we'll put together a little kind of a white paper on what is, how does a, how does a revolving account function, how does a, uh, an extracurricular student activity account function, and how are the, yeah. what are the parameters going to be for each of the clubs within that within that larger account. Yeah, I was going to say it's it's more it's more about the plan, Correct. right? It's, yeah. it's the plan yeah. that you're talking about figuring out. It's what's that final plan. Why don't we put that together for you for kind of September 10th? Yeah. I think we can um, do that. So it's the approval of the opening the account, but how the plan for everything outside of the user <coughs> fees could we Correct, yeah. Could we And it's important to say that the account is going yeah. to be open yeah. because yeah. the fees are going to be collected. Well, it has to clarity. Yeah. So, by 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 practice, we need to approve it, but in reality, the account is going to be open because we're going to be collecting the user fees. Yeah, that's correct. correct. That's so, correct. <laughs> I think just transparency will help resolve. Yeah, we can get, we can put something together yeah. for you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. How do you feel? <laughs> and again, if we're collecting the fee and we're just opening the account, I'm okay with that. I'm worried about. I'm just trying to anticipate what could happen months down the road. And if there are bills that start coming in, I could see, again, if we're saying to maskers, you can't get anything until you spend $70,000, and then other clubs that haven't done anything may say, well, we want to go to this competition now, and we can use the money for that. I just, I just want to, again, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but that's my worry. I, I mean, would it be useful to say that we will to keep these, keep the, um, the other these accounts open until there's a. Uh, would it be useful to you? If, so we keep we'll keep the club accounts open until there's an understanding amongst at, at, for the committee as to how those funds are going to be integrated into the ultimately integrated into the. Yeah, those. I think I guess the, the those accounts would not. Be instantly closed, or the right. plan would not to be and I, close and I, those. And also, I would say that if, perchance, 
any of the clubs raise money in the, in the first month of the school year, that the money right. flows into those accounts as well. I mean, what really needs to happen is we sort of you, I need to sort of understand a little bit more on these sub accounts in terms of what right. our students are doing and what the source in terms of the fundraising are. The maskers was clearly <coughs> described to me, and the, the, the majority of the activity within yep. that maskers sub account was functioning right. through ticket sales and yep. so forth, and it was mm -hmm. it was really something that, in my mind, belonged in a, re in a revolving account um, because of that's how that's functioned. But um, still set aside for the maskers for that. Correct. Point. That's right. Correct. I mean, I think I think I'm comfortable with the user fee being collected and it being expended on advisors and other school expenses. But beyond that, exp my worry is about how the expenditures are going to happen of, of money that goes in there. And if it's privately fundraised by a group, whether they keep the, it can only be for them. If there are extra amounts left over from the, from the user fee, like again, it, does the user fee go to pay the whole advisor or to some of the private We'll, we'll put together we'll something for yeah. September 10th. I mean, I, I, think, I, think, we, I think we can put something together that will absolve you of any worry or concern. That's my concern, and so. I think we can, I think I we mean, can, I'm confident we can do the that. The plan we presented on June 26th laid out exactly what those that revenue that first year would be spent on and it was essentially to offset the stipends right and that's what it is there isn't going to be a significant yeah. amount of there's not yeah that's correct. Right. revenue from the fees available beyond the stipends right yeah. but that was an estimate and so theoretically there could be a surplus it was a very conservative that, estimate so, too. Yeah. very conservative yeah. I, I, again I, I i just i take it to heart when we're talking about doing it a new way and holding money and I just want to make sure that we've thought it out and I just haven't seen well to that point yet. remember it is a pilot it is. and, yeah, and right. when we when we spoke about this previously we said we would be coming back in May and, and you know identifying for you any areas where we thought we had come up short and anywhere we didn't and I think that's still you know it's it's very it, I think it's it needs to be yeah. said that it's very much a work in progress so this is yeah. a, this is I mean, very new cool. yeah. but I think you know Mike, Mike, Michael's Michael's, hard to project down Michael's competence in this area is something I think we can all be assured right. of. So I, I think that's right. I think I think we're already tracking. I mean, obviously, as just as part of regular yeah. accounting, you're you're attracting on paper. You're uh, tracking on paper a lot of theoretical accounts. That are, right. Uh, I, I I think to me the the uh, the bigger not the bigger concern, but uh, to make sure the clubs are, are all the activities and and they're all on board. Yeah, I think it's exactly how it's fair to work. say that. Yeah. That would certainly be what happens, and most I would say I think I think the club advisors. I think they're we're, we're talking the about person. we're talking about like two or three people. Yeah, yep. there's a lot of them are right. shared people. people, so that's right. right. That, that we've already met with. Clean. Maybe yeah. from our viewpoint, we're kind of saying we know right. who's going to be working with these two or three accounts. But yeah, but um, yeah. to put it down on paper may be helpful. Yeah. Be helpful and, to me too. And 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 yeah. please, I'm, none of this is that I don't trust Mr. Connolly or any of that. It's just. You know, just trying. I think our job is to anticipate what problems yeah. could occur. Yeah, and there's, there's likely to be been, questions. There are. There's been a lot to of us too. Yeah. So. There's been a lot of conversations and dialogue and discussion and a lot of behind the scenes, you know, dialogue with the, with auditors and folks that have, you know, we're dealing with pretty significant change. And I think we need to kind of see how things play out. And and but I'm, I can assure you that you know nothing will change and no money will be taken or until you know. Unless, and the idea is that they'll stay within the account. And we legally need to make sure that the students involved that are fundraising or earning that money, that that stays for that purpose. And that's what we'll design a mechanism whether you know, to make sure that happens, like we've always, like we've always done. Yep. So. OK. Well, I will still entertain the motion as um, I will move uh, the, uh, the recommended motion. I move that the North Reading School Committee vote to authorize the creation of the performing arts revolving accounts at each level, elementary, middle school, and high school, in accordance with Chapter 71, Section 47 of the General Laws. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Mr. Bernard, would you like to go over the new staffing? I would. The list continues to grow. So um, I actually have two additional hires that aren't on your list that we have hired since the list was printed for you. But um, 
I will start uh, with the Batchelder School. Um, Jessica Schioli is, has been hired as a new um, special education teacher. Um, also at the um, Batchelder School, but not on your list, um, Teresa Guads has been hired as a special education paraprofessional, and Jennifer Peterson as a grade one teacher. Um, that's a long-term substitute position for the year. Is that for Mrs. Berry? It is. The last one, you said Teresa Guad? Guads. G-W-O-Z-D-Z. G-W-O-Z-D-Z. And the other one was G Peterson? G-W-O-Z-D-Z. -Z. And it's Teresa with an H, T-H-E-R-E-S-A. And the other one is Jennifer Peterson, P-E-D-E-R-S-E-N. It's a long-term sub for the year in a grade one at the Batchelder. Can I ask you one more question sure. after that? Is the, um, it just a lot of parents, because I have a first grader, have yeah. reached out, just, I was just curious if that's been announced to them um, yet? My belief is Mr. Colleen sent an email okay. out, yeah, Blackboard Connect. Okay, yeah. just if they asked me, I wanted to. I don't know if he's announced who the new hire is. Okay. Only that, that, okay. that Mrs. Berry was not going to be in for the year. Got it. The hire came in since Friday. Allow him I think it came in on Friday, actually. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if the announcement of the new person. Okay. But I guess it has now, huh? No, it's, been, it's been an open meeting now. It's fair game. It's not. It's it's been, exactly. It's it's fine. Yep. Fair game since it's been discussed here. Uh, special education paraprofessional. And at the Hood School, um, always nice to see uh, North Reading High School graduates on here, like like Jess Scioli and uh, that I mentioned just a moment ago, and Paul Burdett, who's going to be at the high school. Um, Tommy Hogan, Thomas Hogan has been hired as a special education paraprofessional at the Hood School. And Carrie Ann Moore, also a special education paraprofessional. Um, at the Little School, um, Nicole Saltzman um, and Ruth Ellicus, both hired as special education paraprofessionals. At the Middle School, um, in the Physical Education Department, Tristan Irish, Mr. Tristan Irish. Um, and also physical education, a long-term sub-position for the fall is Anthony Ricardo. Um, the next three are special education paraprofessionals, James Burke, Sarah Morris, and Mary Ellen Groot. Linda Zulo, some of you may know, uh, Linda Zulo has come out of retirement to come back as a general paraprofessional at the middle school. And not on your list is another special education paraprofessional hired since Friday at the middle school, Ashley Egan. And at the high school, we have a long-term substitute in the English department, Amanda Gardner, a science teacher, Thomas Ledoux. Um, we had a, one of our um, high school teachers, uh, Mr. Rick Doucette, was, has been hired as an assistant principal at Saugus High School, so that left a vacancy um, in the technology and engineering department at the high school, and we have hired Justin Reddington. And Caitlin Tropiano has been hired at the high school as a special education paraprofessional. So I think if my count is right, we are up to 37 new hires um, so far this year with a, with a handful to go. So I'm confident we will be fully staffed for opening day um, with maybe one exception that I'll talk about a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Ashley Egan, E-G-A-N, E-G-A-N, special education paraprofessional. I presume the one you will speak about is high school. You you can presume that. High school vice <laughs> principal? Assistant principal, yes. Assistant I principal? Will, I will be. Okay, then I won't ask that question now. All right, well, before we get there, we'll go through our bids and donations. So, I believe this evening there was no bids and donations to accept, but there was a report that I wanted to inform the committee, I think I discussed it at the last meeting that um, I would plan to present the, the final breakdown of the various gifts, both in-kind and monetary donations that we received throughout fiscal year 2018. And I'm very happy to report that the school department has received gifts totaling a value of $195,333.56. So, a significant uh, level of, of generous donations that have helped support expenses <coughs> such as athletic team expenses, fitness equipment, improvements to Cary Park and batting cages expansions, uh, field trip expenses, transportation expenses, technology equipment, drama and musical production expenses, um, costs that support enrichment activities, 
uh, across the district. So the, the list certainly goes goes on and on, but I think everyone is well aware that we certainly couldn't you know, make the North Reading student experience is what it is today without the generous support of the various donors that are detailed on the attached spreadsheet. So certainly the five PTOs or, or parent associ associations um, do a tremendous job with their annual budgets, um, supporting enrichment activities and class field trips and teacher appreciations and uh, you know teacher classroom supplies um, and then doing a lot of extra stuff as they have the funds to do so for technology equipment, robotics equipment, and a, a variety of things that um, has been a challenge for the uh, for the school operating budget to, to support. So we we certainly are astounded throughout the fiscal year about how many gifts and donations are listed each meeting, and you know this list captures it and throughout this past fiscal year. But we certainly appreciate all the efforts by these these various donors and support and booster organizations. Um, I noticed you highlighted all of the student activities. Can you explain what that means? Uh, yeah, that's more for our little accounting, uh, just so we, we, send to, we tend to track the student activity ones. Um, so we know it's more for my office's accounting to know that those, those funds get deposited directly in the student, the student activity account. If they, they're supporting that specific activity and not the gift account, so a lot of what we just talked about, um, so we can uh, you know, track that accounting and, and reconcile those balances. So that's all it is. It's really, it's really our, it our own for, internal tracking. That's right. It wasn't meant for us. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Ignore the highlighting. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It is. It's, it's, a, it's a long list. It sure is. All right. So I do post this on the website as well. Um, subcommittee updates. The finance planning team met on August 21st. Myself, Mr. Buckley, Mike, and Mr. Conley and Mr. Bernard were all there. Um, it was a little bit of a long meeting, but yeah, I think a focus was on where, where things stood as far as um, the revenue plan. There was yeah. quite a bit of discussion around that. Um, and I just, you know, again, I think we're at this time of year, my sense is, is that we're probably about where we usually stand fiscally, and that is, you know, we, we see the challenges lying ahead. Um, and just, I think, you know, the spirit of that meeting was to kind of brace ourselves for probably, you know, another arduous year as we hammer out a budget for well, both the town and the school department. And I think Mr. Prisco uh, mentioned that the, the sanitation or the, the trash was going to be a, a little bit of a hiccup for us, receipt-wise, mm. because it's costing almost more than what we're receiving in. Yeah. So. Trash, trash removals, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, there'll be a little different accounting around, around that, so it kind of remains to be seen how that will impact the revenue plan, uh, but I think it's they're committed to making sure it's does not harm the, the, you know, the school department in terms Mr. of the Biden. revenue. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a challenging year in many ways. I think we've already seen a few expenses higher than we thought they would be. We've seen some revenue projections that aren't going to be what they were supposed to be. And I, mean, I think we're committed to trying to understand the best way forward. And it's, I mean, it's a work in progress. And mm. so we'll, we'll see. All It'll right. be a challenging year. Um, I think that was it for subcommittees that had met so. since last time. Right. So um, I will announce the upcoming meetings. The policy subcommittee will meet September 10th at 5 p.m. in the superintendent's office. The athletic subcommittee will meet September 18th at 12.30 p.m. in the superintendent's office. The finance planning team will meet again September 20th at 8.15 a.m. in the superintendent's office. The step, sus, hmm, substance Abuse Coalition will meet September 25th at 10 p.m. Oops. 10 a.m. <laughs> Sorry. I'll be, I'll be in bed by then. I go. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> at the uh, police, North Reading Police Station, and then the NORCAM 
um, Board of Directors meets on September the 27th at 7 p.m. in the NORCAM office. And with that, Mr. Bernard, do you have an administration? I do, report? Madam Chairman. Thank you. I think uh, you should all have a excuse me. Uh, you should have a packet. Um, so just a few things to highlight for you. Um, Tomorrow, <clears throat> we will um, begin our first of two days of um, orientation of our new teachers. And I believe there are 24 um, slated to come um, for a two-day orientation program with their uh, mentor, assigned mentor teacher. And you're all welcome to come to the high school cafeteria for lunch, if you'd like, at noontime uh, tomorrow. Depends. What are they serving? Excuse me? <laughs> I said uh, filet mignon, oh, shrimp cocktail. <laughs> Uh, so please stop by if your schedule allows. It, it, certainly no pressure, but um, you're, you're all welcome to attend. Um, similarly, um, at 12 p.m. Uh, on uh, September 4th, next Tuesday, is our opening day uh, <clears throat> meeting with all of the faculty and staff of the district uh, before we welcome students on Tuesday, um, September 5th. Uh, Ms. Imbriano, could I ask if you would be willing to share a few uh, Opening uh, remarks on uh, on the fourth in the PAC. Are you available? I am. Thank you. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. Um, you've, you're, you've done it before. Yes. So, um, but um, if you're if you if you're not able to come um, because of work schedules or such, if you if you could just let me know that, but I'll certainly acknowledge um, your presence if you're there. And typically, the committee will sit down front. Um, if you came if you come into the PAC, um, kind of the seats to the to the left. Right is where we usually sit. Right. How long does it run? Just so I can block. So it. yeah, the, it's it's that's a good question. So the schedule right now is about twelve to one um, with different um, presentations. Janine, the teachers' union president, mm -hmm. Dr. Daly, myself, and then we have a keynote speaker at one o'clock. These mm -hmm. are rough times till about two fifteen. And then, it, and, then and then at 2:15 is the is a um, something we started last year that the there are people that come in from the um, from the town hall as well as the insurance health insurance company and speak to the staff about okay. um, ways in which we can, can kind of save money basically by utilizing some of the things that came about through the new health insurance adoption that came into play last year. So that will go from 2:15 to 2:45. Okay. And last last year the whole committee was able to make it, but I think we left nice. after the opening remarks. So yeah, that's that's everybody. not unusual. I think before so. the guest speaker. Yes. Okay. So we do we do things a little bit different. So the first my first two years as superintendent, I had a student performance. Last year and this year, I've got a keynote speaker. Mm -hmm. So next year, I might do something a little different, you know, to kind of just keep it, change it up. But there's about an hour's worth of. So if I'm available 12 to 2, that. If you're if you're available to even 12 to 1. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, really, last year we also. It, it wasn't a keynote speaker right after this initial comments. It was it the was, health insurance. It was the health insurance right. review, which so we left for. I've actually, so I've actually flipped it. those this okay. year. Yeah. Okay. So, so who good is point. The right. Keynote speaker. Gentleman's name is Dr. John Draper. He, the th his he, the title of his presentation is "Crucial Conversations About America's Schools." So interestingly enough, Dr. Draper spoke at um, the annual conference of uh, MASBO, the Mass Association of School Business Officials, and someone that I know that happened to be at that conference, uh, came back very excited about his presentation. And I, interestingly enough, I know two other communities nearby, Stoneham and Swampskit, that are both having him come. I don't know if I told you about Swampskit, but definitely Stoneham. Yeah, yeah. So he got some, you know, he was well received. And so um, Michael came back and was, you know, thought he might be somebody that would be good for the staff. So I reached out to him um, and have spoken to him a couple of times and plan to speak with him again one more time. Uh, this week before next week but um, yeah we're excited to to have him I, I might actually have a neighboring superintendent you don't even know that she spoke to me today in Linfield that may come and hear him speak and is thinking about how possibly having him come next year so so you know we're I'm going into it a little bit blindly I'm taking taking Mr. Connolly at his word so uh, a lot of pressure on there's say all the next pressure Tuesday. on Mr. Connolly yeah. now so I'm sure it's going to be good he sounds great on the phone so we'll see so very good yes Tomorrow, oh, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Anne's a little nervous. We're gonna have a cooler of water on this. So tomorrow, the new teachers get treated to a bus tour of the community, oh, okay. literally oh. in a school bus. Do it every year, and everybody does it. When I got hired as high school principal, first year I had to do it. Every everybody does it. 
though. I was never invited. I on think tour. Mel did once. I think Mel might have done it. Yeah. yeah. It's so it's tomorrow. At I think I think they come back. I think it's like eleven to twelve thirty, but yeah, we might be doing the oh, quick tour if it's. When Mel did it with I think with a horse and a buggy. With a horse yeah, and buggy. Exactly. That was, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a this is a yellow, old yellow school bus that's taking them around. So it's kind of a tradition here. Um, hey, the kids have to take it. This may, may well exactly. be not, uh, on the fifth. So Aunt, my my administrative assistant takes them around town and shows them. You know, where, when you hear about Martin's Pond or McIntyre or Ryers, you know, she takes them to all these kind of. I'll call them landmarks or whatever. Yeah. They're not air-conditioned buses? It is not an air-conditioned yeah. bus tomorrow, no. <laughs> no, it is not. I hear tomorrow's going to be cool, so don't right. worry. Oh, good. Yeah, right. I hope you're right. <laughs> only not, only not low 90s, right? Low 100s, yeah. The newsletter, my summer newsletter, I attached for you. This went out um, as an email distribution, but I know some of you are no longer on our uh, email distribution lists, correct? You might have got. You may have. Apparently not. I don't think. I, I, I don't yeah. think I got. This. Okay, so I think you're off now. I think yeah. we did the switch over. So I, I usually provide a paper copy to the committee anyway. All right. I don't know if I got it. <laughs> I probably did. It was last I got Monday. It. Yeah, a week ago. Well, maybe I did actually. It's been a crazy week. And I definitely I may, I may did not have. It. So I, I wanted to update you. you I'm, I, I think you're all aware that our assistant principal at the high school, Mr. Michael Downs. Um, was named the principal at the Andrews Middle School in Medford last Sunday, a week ago today, is when he spoke with me. He resigned from his position on um, on that following Monday, effective last Friday, the 24th. And I worked with both him and um, the superintendent in Medford, who's who's brand new, um, and had a lot of administrative hiring to do to um, to release Mr. Downs. I believe they started school today, or at least he was needed there today. So, um, you know, I felt. It was important that he, as a new principal, be you know present at his new school, so to speak. So we're working with um, with Mr. Lapret at the high school to uh, you know to kind of fill in any gaps that there might be. And a, you know a number of people have stepped up, both on his teaching staff, the middle school administration, Dr. Daly, myself, and you know we're going to all pitch in to, to make sure that things open smoothly at the high school. I have no no reason to think that they won't. And just to give you a little sense. Um, the position was posted on, it's unusual that we have an administrative vacancy, so I, 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 this is the first time I've had to inform the committee of that. Um, um, so, you know, I just, I think it's important for you to know where we are. We posted the position last Tuesday as of about 5 o'clock today. Believe it or not, we had 50 applicants, wow. 5 zero applicants for what we're, what we're advertising right now is an interim position for the school year, for all of this coming school year. And so we're going to go into it seeing what we can get from that, thinking that this is probably not the best time of year to be advertising for a permanent successor. But that may change. It's just that's, that's where things are right now. So I would expect that um, there could be interviews um, you know, as early as next week. Um, the posting is active through this Friday. I believe it was a two-week posting period. So, so you know, and, and just I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about this briefly on opening day on September 4th. But you know, we, I think it says a little something about our, our district that we've had three people this year move on to administrative positions that um, two teachers, Beth Levitt at the, at the little school, to the Alice Barrows um, Elementary School principalship in Reading, Mr. Doucette that I just moment ago mentioned a moment ago, who uh, interestingly enough has the same office that I had when I was the assistant principal at Saugus High School. Wow. I thought that was kind of, <laughs> until they tear that school down, they're really a new school, but I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and now Mr. Dowd's moving on from an assistant principalship to a principalship of a middle school. So I think it, you know, while, while we certainly wish them all well, you know, they create voids in the system when they're no longer here, and, and certainly three good people that I think will, you know, will certainly do well in their new, new jobs, so. Um, so I wanted to give you also an update on the app. So the truth be told on the app, um, I, I made the decision that to do this correctly, I was going to hold off, and the reason, a little bit, and the reason is the, to download the app through the Apple Store on an Apple device is more involved than it is on an Android device. So there was debate down in my office on whether or not we would roll it out and have it available for only Android device devices and then have it available on Apple devices a little bit later once we went through some, some hoops, so to speak, that Apple is asking us to do, to have it available on an Apple device. So th that plus, um, I think I've spoken uh, before with all of you about um, kind of a, a joint venture with our police department and the community impact team to have an anonymous tip feature um, available in the community. It makes sense to me to have that as part of one of the buttons of the app, and so we're close to having that product available in the community. 
and I think it makes sense to when again when we do this rollout. My hope was to have this available to the community as an app in August for the start of school, but I think those two issues made you know in my mind made sense to you know let's let's do this right. It's very new to us, so the people who are much smarter with this technology than I am are telling me that they think September is a reasonable goal. You know the month of September, so. It's about a month delayed from where I wanted it to be, but in, in any case, I think it was, it was not for a lack of, of certainly effort, and a lot of people have helped me with this, as you know, Michael, Michael Tyrell, Dan Downs, Patrick Daly, um, but we think that this is the more prudent way to do it. So it's coming soon, and I kind of previewed that a little bit in my, in my summer newsletter as well. In, in terms of the anonymous tip, is that an anonymous, anonymous tip that goes directly to the police station? Yes. To the it doesn't station. come through us. We don't correct hold any of that. No, it's for and it's for kind of like, you know, high end. I would say you know criminal like offenses that kind of thing. But it would go to the police department. Correct. And then the last thing I just wanted to share with you um, is you know about opening day. You know this is your last school committee meeting before we open school um, next week. Um, Mr. Connolly um, and I, along with Wayne Hardacre, are. Our, Supervisor of Billings and Grounds toured our, toured our three elementary schools last Thursday, um, as we typically do in the, in the, in the August, month of August, to you know, just kind of you know, spend a dedicated amount of time talking to the custodial staff um, and, um, and checking in on where our progress lies with our schools being ready for opening day. And I think it's fair to say, I, I think this might have been one of my shorter lists uh, of Wayne Hardiker of things that I saw that needed to be done. Um, it was, it was all on one page, I know that, for the three elementary schools. This campus is a little bit different because Michael and I are here, you know, every day, so we, we have a, you know, a real bird's eye view into what, what things might need to be done. But, you know, we have a very good staff that works very hard um, under a lot of pressure to, to do a lot. And um, I, I can assure you all and the public that, that our schools will be in fine condition, ready for opening day. Um, you know, folks at the little school will be treated to a beautiful new gymnasium floor. Mm. You know, we, we've done, a, yeah, some really, you know, it looks wonderful. It really does. And Michael is, has a, when Michael does his presentation for you on, on the capital plan, he has a photo of the floor, and it really looks sharp. Um, we were happy to see. There's a little bit of work to do with the, what they call is a, like kind of a cove molding, like a baseboard molding. That was being done, I think, um, Friday, this coming Friday. But the school really looks sharp. Um, in all of our schools, you know, we, did, yeah. we continued with our painting, um, painting program this year. Um, with, a, with a significant focus on um, the three elementary schools, as well as some, some additional color in this building, in the grade uh, eight wing, um, a couple of office areas, um, the Mo library media center classroom. Um, so, you know, over the last three summers, we've, we've tried to bring some more color into this building with, um, with paint. Um, and I think it, you know, I'm, I think everyone will continue to feel very proud about the condition of our schools. People take. People that do the work take great pride in readying them for, um, for opening day. We have an annual meeting <clears throat> hosted. Wayne Hardica hosts his entire staff on a meeting. It happens to be tomorrow where he invites Michael and I to speak to all of the custodians, buildings and grounds staff, um, and we will express you know, our appreciation to them. But um, things, things look good when we saw them last Thursday. Um, this building will be receiving a pretty significant landscaping effort this week. Um, this is, you know, as you all know, this is a big campus and uh, there's a lot of detail with the mulching and the edging and the weed whacking that we don't typically have at the, the three elementary schools. So we bring a private contractor in for that. Um, and, and, you know, that, that person has a, is on schedule for this week to lead up to, to next Tuesday. So I expect we will be fully staffed with maybe the exception of the assistant principal at the high school. Um, but other than that, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple of more positions to be filled, but we have uh, we have interviews ongoing this week. So, mm -hmm. so Mr. Buckley, I just have two two comments. The first, we're coming into question. The first comment is just also please express to the custodians the school committee's appreciation. For, I will do that tomorrow. Thank you for the grounds because I know it is They're very shiny. Yeah, I know. I, I know it is. I know it is quite a task to keep it up, and I know that we've it is we've. Again, we, we in our goals we express that we really mm -hmm. acknowledge the work they do and that they're overworked and understaffed, and so I think we all appreciate the work they do. I will make sure that they know that tomorrow. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, and then, and again, that they're one of the priorities to try to work on mm -hmm. in the future. Um, and we make that known, by the way. Okay. We we are we are very open with them about yeah. where the committee stands in in, in its annual goals, and and that this is not new this year. I mean, we we we're very open with them and tell them that 
Yeah. You know, we understand. It's just it's a matter of priorities at that point when we get into the winter and we start hammering through the budget. So. And then the, the only other the question is that in your <laughs> in your newsletter you mentioned the one to one. Um, I know we got I know we were able to get some additional funds mm -hmm. by you know the help of some of the local representatives, yes. Mr. Webster. Um, when will those funds be available? And will it? I assume it's not going to mean two years get it in a couple days. It's only going to be one additional grade this year. Is the goal for the year afterwards to potentially do more than one grade at a time, or I mean, what, how would that extra money be applied to sure. with the rollout? Yep. So, I, and I think I don't, if I, if you didn't see the transcript Thursday, we spoke. So uh, Maureen already did a nice interview with Brad Jones and I. Unfortunately, Mr. Webster wasn't available to to be there last Monday. But what we spoke about was very specifically. And by the way, those funds became available on Tuesday from the state. So. Um, Representative Jones has been very good about staying in touch with me since we first met last October to talk about these the the potential for um, special appropriations and he reached out to me after our meeting on Monday because he left that meeting saying that he would do a check-in and see where things would be and I believe it was released on Tuesday I think it was the next day so yeah so the it's gonna flow through the the DESC's grants system so on Tuesday the applications were released so we're sort of filling out the application and, and submitting that so then you would then draw down the funds kind of as you're ready to expend and and so forth so those I think we're we're getting ready to submit those that would allow us to start drawing the funds down and and, and we do not anticipate accessing those funds for I would say at least a couple of three months because the idea is that because we're so the, the current the incoming grade seven students are all getting their Chromebooks this Thursday Okay, or at least that's when the bulk of them will come, you know, depending upon family availability. So that was originally the plan. So with that, with that grade seven and eight have their Chromebooks now, okay, because we're in year two. The additional funds had always been earmarked for advancing one more grade. But what we typically do is we do a pilot year, the year prior to the students receiving the Chromebooks, the students and the teachers, and we do a year of professional development with their use. We're not able to do that necessarily here because we don't want to delay the rollout in grade nine. But what we've, what we, what we shared with the staff in grade, uh, the grade nine teachers at the high school before they went on summer vacation, was that there was the likelihood that these funds would be avail made available. And if that were to happen, that this is what we would do, and we would pilot and do the PD in, the, in a in a semester, kind of a condensed period. So from say September to January, September to December. Since the money has been awarded, the high school principal has communicated out to the staff that that now is the plan, and I think my, my article speaks to that, both in the transcript and in the, in the newsletter. Um, so that's our plan right now, is we, we want to do the PD, we want to do the, you know, get them in the hands of people um, with the professional development happening in the fall, and then the expectation, again, these are soft deadlines, but the expectation is by the second semester, January 20th or thereabouts, um, they would be functioning in the same way as if they, uh, if, as if it was uh, September of, of 2019. So then next, so at the end of the year, seventh, eighth, and ninth would have Chromebooks, and presumably the following year it would go to so, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. Correct. We can get it again for next correct. year. Okay. Right. The ninth graders that are getting the mid-year this year would advance to grade ten. Eight would move to nine. Seven would move correct. to eight, and the new seventh graders. So in September of 2019, okay, just about a year from now. The, the Chromebooks would be in the hands of all students in grades 7, 8, 9, and 10, whereas we originally thought that that would be 7, 8, and 9. So through, the, through that special appropriation that Representative Jones and, and, and Senator Tao were, were helpful in achieving, we're, we were able to advance the, the program a year. The key to this, and I've been, I think, pretty pointed about this, and, and you know, we, will, we, will, we, will, we will express this again in front of the Capital Improvements Planning Committee, is that when you make a request like Representative Jones made on our behalf, the more we can identify a kind of a matching fund from the community, the greater chance is that the fund will, will be made by the state. So it's so not like they can take We're not looking to replace this. We will still be asking for our $60,000 appropriation for the Capital Improvements Planning mm -hmm. Committee for fiscal year 20. Mm -hmm. So it was a big, and I'm glad you brought it up because I, I probably was remiss in not speaking about it here, but I guess I, I felt like it was quite public in the paper but yep. you know representative jones mel webster you know was the one that back in october of of 2017 um spoke with me about you know 
it might be nice to see if we can have a conversation with Brad Jones about how do we how do we benefit as a community from um, this kind of a special appropriation. And to his credit, Brad came right in. We met, and in January, I had in his hands two ideas that are the two that ultimately got funded: the school safety and security initiatives and, and technology. And asked him, did this did in his mind did this fit the framework um, of what might be um, approved? And he felt that it did, and he shepherded that through over the next, whatever it was, six or seven months. Always looking outside the box. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a, it's pretty that's, significant. That's, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty significant. All right, anything more? Not from me, Madam Chairman. Okay. Did you guys have any more questions or anything for that? All right. Um, for future business, we have um, the new education educator luncheon tomorrow at 12 p.m. in the cafeteria as John mentioned you're more than welcome to come if you are available on September 4th we have opening day meeting with the district faculty and that is at 12 p.m. in the performing arts center on September 10th we have a regular school committee meeting here at 630 in the distance learning lab and then on September 24th also at 630 the regular school committee meeting here as well in the distance learning lab. And with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.